a little bit of an encouragement tonight. And here's the reason why I said the last uh, song that Tom did, I loved how the Lord really just set that up because I, I don't think he or anybody really knew ahead of time, but the, the title and topic of what we're talking about tonight is worship as a lifestyle, trusting God with all our heart. So when he said that last song was all about trusting God, I, it, it couldn't have been set up any more just beautifully. So thank you, Tom, for, and thank you, Lord, for just a great setup to that message here tonight. Before we get rolling, though, into a little bit of the word and a little bit of hopefully encouragement for all of you out there on Facebook tonight, let us uh, pray to get things going. Father, we just ask uh, that you would give me the words to speak tonight so that uh, I may decrease so that you may increase in me and that the word that goes forth tonight just may edify you lord and that just that it encourages motivates and inspires people tonight to trust in you with all their heart with a peace that surpasses all understanding that you do have great plans for us in your good and perfect timing and we thank you tonight that we continue to draw closer to you in your presence and in your word tonight in jesus mighty name amen so we want to start tonight by just touch, touching on the whole worship as a lifestyle aspect of it. And, and for that, we go to our opening scripture in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Uh, if you want to follow along, you can. Otherwise, I'll be reading these um, out loud. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. If we've learned anything from the world shutdown, if we've learned anything from this past year, is that worship should be present everywhere in our lives. It shouldn't be reserved for just a Sunday service. I, there used to be this saying, and the church I went to, following Christ is not about religion. It's all about a one-on-one -on -one relationship with our living God. And he's got to be real to you. And in order for him to be real to you, it's got to be like a friendship where you don't just go to your friend just when you need him, or you don't go to your friend, or you don't go to your parent. If God is our good, good father, you don't just go to him when you need something. At least we hope kids out there that are listening aren't doing that. <laughs> but and we and we also hope that you know, just like a good parent, our father wants to be here for all of our life's moments. It shouldn't be about going to worship in an online service or going to worship in a church building for two hours on a Sunday morning, and then two minutes after you leave in the parking lot, you forget everything that was taught. It should be reflected. The whole reason why we gather together is to not forsake the fellowship of the coming together, but also so that we can apply all those things that we've been refreshed in learning and go out in the world and to demonstrate that to its fullest, to love on people, to serve on people. That's what we should be continually drawing closer to him to do. And when we talk about worship as a lifestyle, it's what it means to, to love and to serve, whether it be our coworkers, whether it be our spouses, if you're married, whether it be being the best parent we can be for our kids, whether it be our church members, whether it be our friends. The Bible even says to love our enemies. As hard as that sounds, that's what we're called to do because a kind word turns away wrath. And with the division that is out there in a lot of the world that we've seen over the last few years, what God really wants to do is he wants to bring the collective voices of the church and bring us together and unite us by the very common bond that unites us. And that is Christ. But to do that in order to be the best people that we can be for him, we need to do the best that we can to be a true reflection of him every day, every moment. Because God wants to be there and God wants to provide and deliver for you, not just in the big bang moments, but he wants to be invited in in the small things as well, in the small blessings. There are so many blessings that happen throughout the course of the day. That how many of them do we just, we don't pay attention to or we take them for granted? 
And they're often amplified in times of struggle, those small blessings, but those small blessings, those small opportunities, they're there on a daily basis. We should always be coming to him with a thankful and grateful heart because he does so much for us and we are his children. You know, I like to say all the time that when we are Christian, when we get saved, the misconception is that we're saved. All right. Life is well. Everything's miraculously done. And we don't have to go through trials or tribulations ever again. That couldn't be further from the truth. Unfortunately, the reality is, is life doesn't stop. The one thing that the Lord does and it will walk with him is it gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding through those storms. And it equips us and gives us all the tools necessary in that toolbox to be able to deal with life as it comes. Because when we follow him and where we are under his wing, word says he'll never give us any more than we can handle. And I know sometimes, especially throughout this past year, we have been tested. We have been tried. We think we're on the, on the edge of more than we can handle at times. But God has you each and every step of the way. And, and to, I say to everybody, don't give up. And we're going to talk about what it means to reside and trust him in all of our heart in this. We go to, I want to talk about just the, the peace of God for a moment. When we go into Philippians 4, 6, it says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests and make them known to God. And it talks about just the peace that surpasses all understanding when that happens, when you give those things to him. It says, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You know, in preparation, I tuned into a Facebook Live that one of the anchors from our local Seattle radio station does on the daily. And I actually heard something today that I'm going to borrow here and share because I think it makes sense in the context of what we're talking about. She said, you can either have a choice. You can be a warrior or you can be a worrier. Now think about how close those two words are together. You can either be a warrior for Christ, moving forward with bold confidence and peace and assuredness, or you can be filled with worry, anxiety, heartache. But the beauty about what the word says is worry, it doesn't add a single day to your life. In fact, he says, if I take care of the birds, if I take care of nature, if I take care of all these things, how much more at the end of the day will I take care of you? That's what he promises to all of us. So when he says worry doesn't add a day of our life, he really wants us to live out the scripture. When we're talking about worship as a lifestyle, to go before him and to just lay all these things at the feet of the cross with prayer and thanksgiving. Let's go to God with a grateful heart, a heart filled with assurance. Make your request known to God. Just lay it all out there. He wants to know not only the places where we're rolling along good, but if we're struggling, if we're having the time of things, make that known. He wants to know that too. It needs to be a personal relationship between us and the Savior. And he says, and understanding the peace that surpasses all understanding. He wants to give you peace so much that you can't wrap your mind around it. Will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And I also want to talk, when we talk about moving in our giftings, when we talk about trusting in God with all our heart, we also need to talk a little bit about his good and perfect timing. And when we talk about that in Peter 3, 8, says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, 
not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So many times we hear a vision or we hear a promise from God. And the tendency is we automatically think it's for the right now, like right this second. There are plenty of times that I've thought that. If we're doing it right, there's plenty of times we all have thought that. And there's nothing wrong with the eagerness and a confidence and an excitement for what we're doing in the Lord. But some things he shows us may not be for right now. It may be for down the road. And there may be some prep work in our hearts and prep work around us behind the scenes to continue to push us to get us to that point. And so I'd say to anyone who's in the waiting, don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. He hears you. He knows the desires of your heart. He is right there, ready to deliver. But wait on God and his perfect timing, because when you roll in his perfect timing, that's how things last. Because he operates and sent things up for eternity. He is not setting you up to fail. That's the other scripture I want to bring tonight. Jeremiah 29, 11, when he says, I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper, prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future, to give you hope. He wants to give you all of these things. But guys, wanted in his, I'm going to give you a quick little story. The ministry I run, Christian Media Spotlight, just recently passed 14 years, celebrated its 14th anniversary, had its roots in television. I, for a number of years, had been told it was going to grow, it was going to do its thing, it was going to reach a certain level, and I had done some things over the years to gradually, slowly push it in that direction, but nothing that ever really amounted to a mass amount. At the beginning of 2020, some different things are happening. Festivals were canceling. We were left with a gap in our summer programming. And I'd really debated about either taking the show on hiatus, giving a break. I was like, Lord, is this it? And he, he said, as loudly as I've heard anybody, as loud as I've heard God say anything to me in my life, he said, no, you're not supposed to quit. You're not supposed to go on hiatus. You're going to continue. You're not going to miss a day of production. I'm like, well, okay then you're going to have to show me how to do this because I don't know. I can't see it right now, but he gave me a vision not long after that. I had said that he gave me a vision much like what Red's room does. We do it on kind of a pre-recorded compilation format, but he gave me the vision for the night of hope music series, which we are 13 compilations in that along with a couple other initiatives have blown this thing up to anything beyond my wildest dreams. He took the vision that I thought was there for it and he magnified it more than I ever could imagine. It was after our seventh night of hope. He, I, it, I, we were already running long. It was a powerful night. And he had me cue up our traditional closing song, which wasn't on the lineup, ironically, that night. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I'll do it. But why? We're already running long. He says, do it. Okay. I'm queuing up the last song. And it was the very first song I ever submitted for that Night of Hope series. And as I was queuing it up and I was, I was playing it, as I was, all these are when I'm producing, directing, I'm hosting. He's downloading this as it's going on. He says, you remember when I told you not to quit several months ago? It's like, yeah, I remember. He's like, this is why. He goes, I've created this for a time and a moment such as this. You didn't know it at the time, but I had to do a work in you. I was doing a work behind the scenes. All those years of building a foundation has gotten it to where it is now. Through that simple act of trust, of faith as a mustard seed, because that's what it was at the time, God was able to deliver. But you know what the cool thing is? He's not a respecter of persons. He's waiting to do that for every single one of you, what your hopes are, what your goals are, what your dreams are. Be okay to dream. If it's anything coming out of this, other side of this pandemic, don't be afraid to dream. 
Don't be afraid to dream big and give those dreams to God. There is so much talent that's waiting to be unleashed, that's waiting to be shared with the world. As I've shared before on our program, I've heard it said it's akin to a puzzle, a great big puzzle. We each have a piece of that puzzle. And each piece in a puzzle is uniquely different. No two puzzle pieces are ideally the same. We have to realize in God's big puzzle, we all have a puzzle piece to play that is uniquely and wonderfully ours. And you think when you complete a puzzle and you have a puzzle piece that's missing right in the middle, how glaring is that missing piece at the end of the day when you get it put together and that piece is missing? That's what the puzzle of God is like without your peace. We all have a piece to play. We all have a role to play in the kingdom. We all have different giftings, different talents, but that's okay. We're all supposed to bring them together, trusting in God. And sometimes as we're going through, it is the faith of the mustard seed, but you know what? That's good enough. Don't ever think you don't have enough faith to make it happen because the reality is he doesn't call the equipped. As the saying goes, he equips the called. Don't ever think if God's called you to do something that you are not equipped enough to handle it because you know what? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And somebody needs to hear that tonight. Somebody needs to hear that just encouragement, pushing, nudging reminder of don't give up. Even if things aren't happening right now, even if things are raging around you and they aren't what they seem to be. Part of the beauty of faith is faith is a substance of things hoped for yet not seen. We need to stop going off of what our eyes see and go off of what he sees and remind yourself each and every day who you are called and created to be. That's how we move forward, secure in our gifting, secure in our talents. We're moving forth in what we're uniquely called to do and the beauty of the teamwork of God's kingdom can really be unleashed like never before. And that's what it's going to take. All of us coming together with our own giftings, our own callings, whatever they are for you. And start moving forward in boldness and assuredness and confidence. God won't give any more than you can handle. And if you think you're on the edge of that, like the scripture I read, with prayer and thanksgiving and supplication, Give those requests to God. Sometimes we all have rough days. You know what? That's, that's human if we're doing it right. But it's not how many times we fail. It's how many times we get back up again. Don't ever think that you failed so many times that you can't ever be used by God. That is a fallacy straight from the enemy. Don't ever believe that lie again. It's not how many times you fail. It's how many times you get back up again. I want to see everybody get back up again and not quit. Final scripture that I'm going to give you tonight. It's from Hebrews. In trusting God with all our heart, in worshiping as a lifestyle, let us not forget in times like these, when we're on Facebook, all of us gather together on Zoom, gathering together in person for some of the first time again. Let us not forget and forsake the coming together of the brethren. Hebrews 10, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching out of the overflow of what God gives you guys, give it away to somebody else, to a friend that needs just a kind word of encouragement to your kids who may need this during this time frame, to a spouse. Don't forget to encourage them and cheer them on in their gifts to our coworkers, push each other as a team to accomplish the mission. Whatever people that God has placed around you in your sphere of influence, don't ever think you can't make a difference. You can each and every day. So all of you, go out tomorrow. Wake up. 
for the pain may be in the night, as the word said, but the joy comes in the morning. Wake up tomorrow with a heart of, I challenge everybody tonight, when you wake up tomorrow, wake up with the spirit of gratefulness, gratitude, and thankfulness, and treat each day as the gifting that it is. Lord, how can I serve you today? How can I love on your people? How can I go out? What have you called me to do today? Because we're all not guaranteed tomorrow. Let us all be more diligent about operating part of worship as a lifestyle, guys, in closing, is being able to operate in the moment, operate in today. Let us all be refreshed and renewed in today, for today is the day that the Lord has made. Don't get stuck too far in the past of yesterday, and don't get too far forward in the future that God can't use you in today. Utilize today, appreciate it for the gift that it is, and start moving, guys. We're all called. You're all capable. Now go out and live your best life for the kingdom. Amen. That is tonight's message for you guys. Uh, hopefully that gives you a few nuggets of encouragement, I hope, tonight uh, for each and every one of you. 